Tadalafil, otherwise known as Cialis, you've probably heard, helps engorge your Johnson with blood, which may be useful depending on the activities you partake in. Do not take it if you are a pole vaulter, or should you? Is losing an Olympic medal worth the potential health benefits you may garner from Tadalafil? Well, I'll let you guys decide that after watching this video. But the main point here is that portraying Tadalafil as a dick pill is simply the most effective marketing strategy, okay? It, you know, if you say, oh, it's kind of good for the heart, you know, it may help your brain a little, you know, your sales will be mid. If you say, this shit makes your dick rock hard, sales explode, okay? So I started experimenting with Tadalafil back in 2019 after I heard you could just buy it online. I perceived it superior to Sildenafil or Viagra because it has a much longer half-life. I was indeed curious if it would be effective at its marketed purpose, but I was also intrigued by its other potential benefits. In fact, the site I bought it from back in the day was shown to me by a bodybuilder friend of mine who swore he used it primarily for bodybuilding purposes. You know, I was somewhat skeptical, but I did believe, you know, these mysterious other effects must exist to an extent. So, you know, erectile quality is a good proxy for overall cardiovascular health, as long as there aren't too many variables at play, you know, social anxiety, if you're taking some sort of vasoconstrictor like caffeine, etc. But this is why older men have trouble getting an erection, even when they're fully aroused. You know, the same deterioration in the circulatory system that hinders blood flow from entering your Johnson is the same deterioration in the circulatory system that hinders the blood from entering your heart. And of course, that could be fatal in the long run. So that begs the question, could Tadalafil slow the progression of heart disease, which is the number one leading cause of death? And the answer is almost certainly yes. To what extent? I'm not quite sure. I'll leave that up to you. But there's some pretty cool research that's been done. So in this study, when participants were given Tadalafil, their brachial artery flow-mediated dilation more than doubled, which means that when blood flowed through the artery, the percentage increase in diameter from baseline more than doubled. It went from a 4% increase to a 9% increase, which seems pretty significant to me. Okay, because we know dysfunctional endothelium expedites atherosclerosis. So a significant improvement in endothelial function is going to significantly reduce the risk of heart disease. So accordingly, Tadalafil is known to lower blood pressure. So if you're dilating the arteries, you know, making them wider, obviously blood can flow through them easier. So this is really the only concern when it comes to Tadalafil. Usually a slight decrease in blood pressure is a good thing. But if Tadalafil is combined with nitrates, which also decrease blood pressure, blood pressure can reach dangerously low levels. And that has actually killed a few people, which has led to this myth that Tadalafil is somehow bad for the heart when the opposite is the case in most circumstances. So now that you know that Tadalafil is a vasodilator, it improves blood flow generally throughout the entire body, you can extrapolate what other beneficial effects it may have. So for example, I heard Dr. Huberman speak about how theoretically Tadalafil could help mitigate hair loss by enhancing blood flow to the follicle, which is the same mechanism of action through which minoxidil mitigates hair loss. You know, obviously it's going to improve pumps in the gym. I can attest that that is indeed the case. This is so hard. <laughs> but do the bodybuilding benefits go beyond just a good pump? Well, possibly. Check out this study. So Tadalafil improves lean mass and endothelial function, we knew that, in non-obese men. Now, how on earth does it do that? Well, the authors speculated, probably via enhanced insulin secretion, estrogen reduction, and improvement in endothelial function. So wow. Can Tadalafil really modulate estrogen that significantly? Well, this other study does seem to support that. So 10 to 20 milligrams of Tadalafil reduced estrogen by 17% on average, which is indeed pretty significant. So how exactly does it do this? No one is quite sure, but Tadalafil's effects are so broad, it's tough to pinpoint a precise mechanism of action. Remember, it's enhancing blood flow everywhere. So essentially every physiological system is going to be affected. So, you know, increased blood flow and tissue oxygenation, as well as the general effects of Tadalafil on cellular metabolism, it might theoretically affect local aromatase activity, thereby decreasing estrogen. You know, I think I should personally do more isolated Tadalafil blood work experiments and report back. So maybe I will do that in the future. You know, but I do, I want to be careful and not hype up Tadalafil too much. Are its effects 
quite broad, yes. Enhanced blood flow essentially everywhere, in including the brain, by the way. So there are studies demonstrating enhanced cerebral perfusion and thereby cognition. So every organ system utilizes blood flow. So theoretically, Tadalafil benefits the entire body. Are these effects significant? Yes. Are they huge and life-changing? You know, are you going to immediately feel greater cardiovascular output and improved cognition? No, I believe the effects are going to be much more subtle than that. But I believe when taken long-term, these effects, you know, they're gonna add up. The cool thing about Thailand is it's widely available here. It's ridiculously cheap, you know, so I can just snag some generic Cialis whenever I wish. But if I'm ever in a country like, you know, the USA where it's less accessible, then Swiss Chems always comes in clutch. So the final thing, many people are worried about building a tolerance to Tadalafil. The research indicates that this is not a tangible phenomenon, but I definitely hear anecdotal reports about someone building a tolerance. And my insight is that when it comes to erections, it's extremely psychological. So if you believe you should be building a tolerance, it may become a self-fulfilling prophecy, and you may notice decreased erection quality because that is precisely what you expected. Personally, I don't notice a tolerance, and a big reason for that is because I'm, well, I'm familiar with the research, so I'm not expecting one. And in fact, when I discontinue Tadalafil, my erectile quality seems to stay above baseline. Now, that may be due to some sort of cumulative circulatory system healing and or the reinforcement and expectation of that stimulus physiological response connection that lingers even after discontinuation. So, look, again, everyone is different, but almost everyone I speak with has positive results. So, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your experiences with Tadalafil in the comments below. Let me know if you guys have any other insights, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.